All right, what's up guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media back with another Dokkan battle video. So we are about a week into the Fizz Beer celebration on Global and part two is right around the corner. If you look in the in-game news, it says here that part two will be available from uh, 10 30 p.m pacific standard time on june 14th or sunday now for me it's going to be the morning of monday but either way it's going to be very very soon and the question that a lot of people have been asking me and just kind of speculating is what exactly are we getting for part two of this celebration before the five-year anniversary drops at the end of june slash you know early uh july right so in today's video we're gonna be talking about that and of course I don't know anything for sure it's not like confirmed but uh, I believe I have a pretty good idea of what's coming so first things first the new banner or new unit so if you go over to the JP the Japanese versions banners that they've had uh, it's actually pretty easy to figure out most likely what the part two banner for global is going to be now of course we currently have the fizz beerus banner here and i do apologize for showing this image for my fellow global players because this probably will trigger a few people uh, mostly because of this part right here and the fact that he's not there on the global one uh <laughs> i mean i've talked a lot about this uh we're not going to focus too much on it in today's video because you know it's just a whole different issue and uh, we're gonna you know we're gonna make it go away okay so fizz beerus banner and uh, after this there's really no i mean there's really not that many banners that were missing from the jp side right i mean there is of course the gogeta and uh, or vegeto and gogeta banners as well as the uh dual lr uh, rose and broly banners but we know those are coming for the five year anniversary so they're obviously not coming for part two here and uh, beyond that, if you look down a little bit, yeah, we have had all these banners already. We had the dual Dokkan Fest here with the Vegeta and Goku. And, uh, you know, the Gumku banner, the 13 banner, so on and so forth. So most likely, what we're going to be getting for part two of the current celebration is something that JP got pretty recently. And that would be this right here the legendary summon banner for the LR Nappa and Vegeta. Now, I know it's uh, gonna be kind of soon, considering JP only got it, I wanna say, maybe less than two months ago. So, like, usually stuff takes longer than that to make its way from JP to global, right? But, I mean, that's really the only option we have, right? Aside from that, there's a dual Dokkan Fest between uh, Boo and go tanks and we're not going to get a dual dokkan fest before the five year anniversary and especially because we just had a dokkan fest banner so the thing that makes the most sense is a legendary summon banner and the banner that makes the most sense or really the only banner that we know of is this one right here unless we get like a global first for part two i mean okay, look there's another option a third option would be some random like old lr featured right like uh lr cell or you know lr goku and frieza or something like that which is a possibility but i don't really see that happening i do think we're gonna get the lr nappa and vegeta banner right here and if we take a quick look uh not the greatest banner man i mean the, the, some of these units are actually pretty solid right we got this uh frieza here uh, this goku's good i mean to be honest like that these guys are good too this golden frieza is great so like yeah some decent you know non token fest ban uh, units featured but for the most part legendary summon banners are just not great value for your stones so, unless you guys really, really want this Nappa and Vegeta, I would say it's most likely, it should probably be a skip for most people, um, if you want to be just smart, you know, with your stones. But uh, that being said, I do think this is going to be it. I could be wrong, like I said at the beginning of this video, it could be something completely different, but I do think this is going to be it. Now, moving on to the actual details for this Vegeta and Nappa, if you guys don't know, Let's start with the leader skill. All right, so it's going to be Diabolical Villains. I think the name is probably going to change when it comes to global because usually um, there are a few minor adjustments. So it could be like 
super bad guys or something. I don't know, but <laughs> it's currently called Diabolical Villains. Category key plus four, HP, attack, and defense plus 130%. And we'll take a look at this category in a sec. Actually, you know what? Let's just look at it now. It's a kind of interesting category, and uh, it was a category that had a bit of controversy because there are people that were like, there are all these units that should be on it. There's certain units that are on it that don't make sense. I'm not going to get into that too much in this video, but the official description here is it consists of characters who have killed at least one of their allies. And of course, you know, very early in Dragon Ball Z and the Saiyan Saga, uh, Vegeta does kill Nappa, right? So he obviously makes sense for the leader of this category. And then the rest of it, we have Baby, we have uh, Tech Broly, LR Rose, the free to play LR Goku Black that's coming for the anniversary, of course. Uh, Frieza, a bunch of Frieza's actually. I mean, Frieza has killed a lot of his allies or sub subordinates, so obviously he makes a ton of sense too. Um, Broly, and then the free to play LR Frieza. And then beyond that, you guys can take a quick look. It's not a bad category. Uh, it really isn't, but it's also not that impressive. It's just like, you know, it, it, it's okay, it's there. So we have Diabolical Villains, key plus 4, HP attack and defense plus 130%, or Extreme AGL, key plus 4, HP attack and defense plus 100%. Their super attack, uh, 12 key is raises attack and defense for one turn and causes colossal damage to all enemies. And uh, this makes them very, very good for the world tournament. In fact, I've heard some people say that they are now the best world tournament um, unit, like even better than STR Broly. I can't say that for a fact, but I can tell you they will be very good. I just don't know if they're gonna be better than STR Broly. I mean, I think the main thing that makes them better than STR Broly is the fact that they will be self-sufficient for key, so getting that 12 key super isn't gonna be that tough, whereas STR Broly obviously struggles quite a bit for key and you have to use like items and stuff like that to get his you know super attack off consistently right so uh yeah attack to enemies raises attack and defense and then 18 key greatly raises attack and defense for one turn and causes mega colossal damage um and greatly lowers the enemy's defense passive attack and defense plus 78 percent key plus five when hp is 78 percent or more plus an additional attack plus 75 percent within the same turn after evading an attack plus an additional attack and defense plus 7800 per existing enemy. And of course, if you're in a world tournament, you're getting a lot more uh, attack and defense since you're facing up to seven enemies, right? Exchange with Vegeta when conditions are met. So the active skill here is called Nappa Lookout, lowers attack by 50%, own attack by 50%, but evades enemies' attack, including super attacks, for one turn. And that's how you get this extra. 78% attack um, after you're baiting, right? And then can be activated from the third turn from start of battle once only. And the exchange condition, exchange with Vegeta when HP is 50% or less starting from the fourth turn from start of battle. Links are same warrior race, brutal beatdown, tough as nails, berserker over over 9,000, shattering the limit, and legendary power. Um, kind of rough links, I'm not gonna lie, man. Over 9,000, uh, tough as nails. Um, Berserker, like, yeah, these are not the greatest links, but at least they have Shadowing the Limit, I guess, for some key, but could have been much better. Okay, categories, Pure Saints, Terrifying Conquerors, Diabol Diabolical Villains, and let's take a look at the, um, the exchange, Vegeta. Okay, so once you exchange into Vegeta, his 12 key becomes Slash Swing, 18 key is Gallic Gun, and the 12 key raises attack and defense for one turn, causes colossal damage, and lowers attack. And the 18 key greatly raises attack and defense for one turn, causes mega colossal damage, and massively lowers the enemy's defense. Passive recovers 50% HP once only. So this happens when you first get the exchange, he'll heal you for 50%. Then key plus 3, attack and defense plus 100%, plus an additional key plus 3, and attack and defense plus 18% when facing only one enemy, plus an additional key plus 3, and attack and defense plus 18% when, when attacking super class enemies, attacks effective against all types when key is 24. So in this form as Vegeta, uh, this unit is very, very powerful. Like, very, very strong. For the pre-exchange for Nappa, like, they're good. Um, but not nearly as good like <laughs> as just Vegeta, but of course, because they attack all, 
uh, they are very good for something like World Tournament. But once you transform into Vegeta, that boost is pretty crazy. And he also gets the attacks effective against all types when key is 24. And since he gets so much key, right? He gets so much key, like just on his passive. Uh, you're gonna be getting his 24 key super pretty pretty frequently and his two new links are Royal Lineage and Prodigies still kind of a rough link set, but Slightly better I guess I mean better than Berserker at least right and uh, Categories Fury Saints. I mean I, they're the same actually uh, What else? Nothing else really to talk about. Yeah, so that is the Nappa and Vegeta that I think most likely will be coming for part two of the uh, Fizz Viewer Celebration. And then after that, I think what we're also going to get is a new world tournament because number one, we just got the Fizz Krillin and LR Krillin is basically a unit that's made for the world tournament, right? It only makes sense for them to give us a new world tournament. Also, the other reason we should be getting a new world tournament is because the last one was literally three months ago. All right, it's been three months since we had a world tournament on Global where, where we got the Kale and Khalifla, and uh, it's just time. It's really time. Like, it's been so long that I'm actually looking forward to a new world tournament. So I think we're going to be getting the 33rd world tournament probably um, either next weekend or the weekend after that. It should probably, like, be the week after Part 2 starts. So, like, somewhere around, like, the 21st, maybe? 20. I don't know, somewhere around there, all right? So expect a new world tournament. Could be wrong, but I think it's likely. And uh, one exciting thing about the upcoming world tournament is that there's a chance that we'll be getting LR Demon King Piccolo. Because if you could look at the JP side, for their 33rd world tournament, they got Kale and Khalifla, right? But then the, I believe the LR was still, yeah, LR Yamcha. But then the world tournament right after on JP, the 34th one, introduced LR Demon King Piccolo. So obviously we're off by one tournament, but if you just go by the fact that they got Kaelin Khalifla and then the next one they got Demon King Piccolo as their local reward, um, there's a chance, there's a chance that we get Demon King Piccolo for this world tournament. It could be the one after though, just, just to be clear. All right, it could be the one after. And Demon King Piccolo is very solid, all right? so. Let's take a look at what he does. His leader skill, by the way, this dude has one of the best card arts in the game. All right, I'm gonna just be, I'm gonna just be straight. Like, <laughs> this looks awesome. It looks so good. Okay, so leader skill, terrifying conquerors, key plus three, HP attack and defense plus 120%. Super attack, 12 key, raises defense for one turn, causes colossal damage. Is 18 key, ra greatly raises defense for one turn and causes mega colossal damage. Passive is attack plus 6,000 per tech key sphere obtained, reduces damage received by 50% with five or more key spheres obtained, randomly changes key spheres of a certain type to tech key spheres, and rejuvenate with the power of the Dragon Balls when conditions are met. His transformation conditions rejuvenate with the power of the Dragon Ball starting from the seventh turn from start of battle, or when there is a Dragon Ball Saga, a world tournament or Dragon Ball Seekers category enemy. So obviously seven turns is long, but uh, if you're facing one of these enemies, then uh, I think basically he transforms immediately. That's that's my understanding, at least, right? Look, it says rejuvenate from, from the seventh turn or when there's a DB Saga world tournament or Dragon Ball Seekers category enemy. So I believe if you're facing one of these enemies, he will, you know, transform from the start of the battle. His links, Revival, Demon, Sh Incredible Adventure, Guidance of the Dragon Balls, uh, Nightmare, Shattering the Limit, and Legendary Power. And categories are Resurrected Warriors, Namekians, Full Power, Dragon Ball Seekers, Time Travelers, DB Saga, and Terrifying Conquerors. And once he rejuvenates into Demon King Piccolo, not Elder, just Demon King Piccolo, his super attacks are uh, the 12 key, raises attack and defense for one turn, causes colossal damage, and 18 key greatly raises attack and defense for one turn and causes mega colossal damage. And his passive is attack plus 6666, 6666 per key sphere obtained, reduces damage received by 66% for five turns from start of battle, reduces damage received by 50%, um, with five or more key spheres obtained starting from the sixth turn and randomly changes key spheres of a certain type, tech excluded, 
to tech key spheres. So just a lot of damage reduction, guys. Like he's gonna be very, very tanky. And uh, his links, the only one that changes is the thirst for conquest. And that's it, guys. So that's the Demon King Piccolo for you right there. Um, not much else to say about him. And the last thing I want to quickly talk about is, of course, something that was already announced in the in-game news, and that's the Tech Type banner that's making a return along with the Token Awakenings for the Tech Tien and also the uh, Cell here. And this banner is going to be very similar to all the other Type banners we've had, with the exception um, of maybe a few changes to the featured units, which, generally speaking, people don't care too much about, right? Just some Tech units and also the two supports. But the more exciting part, obviously, is always the fact that your chance of pulling the tech type LRs or the specific type of LR for that banner, and in this case, tech type, uh, is, is, is higher than the average banner. So I might actually throw a couple of multis into this banner just for some dupes or a chance to pull some dupes of tech Broly. And uh, you know what? My Goku Black actually has no dupes. So getting my first dupe would be pretty nice, too. And uh, this guy is one dupe away from Rainbow, even though I never use him. He's honestly, in my opinion, quite underwhelming. Like his 18 key hits super hard, but if you don't get that 18 key, his damage is like nothing, right? So not, not trying to piss off anybody, but I, I think he is one of the more underwhelming LRs overall as far as performance goes. And then of course, uh, Goku and Frieza, still insane. Would love to pull dupes there, so... Yeah, I might, uh, I might actually summon. Y'all let me know in the comments down below if you guys plan to summon on this banner. I mean, if you don't have Tien and free, uh, Cell, especially if you don't have Tien, might be worth it. I don't know though, the anniversary's coming, so it's up to you. It's up to you guys, but there you go, that's the banner. And that is pretty much all there is to talk about in this video, guys. Those are the three things that I'm fairly confident. Actually, I know the last one's coming for sure, but these other two, the World Tournament, as well as, uh, LR Nappa and Vegeta's banner, I'm pretty confident are coming for part two. We might get some other stuff too, but uh, these are the ones that you know I I've been thinking about recently, and hopefully uh, most of them you know come to pass. Most of them actually happen because I did say it's not confirmed, but it still would suck to be wrong. Anyways, <laughs> that is today's video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys are hyped for whatever part two has to uh offer and after that we are jumping right into the five year anniversary festivities so either way man global is about to be on fire i can't wait uh that's it guys that's all that's the entire video i appreciate you guys as always for watching and uh, as always if you liked the video then make sure to like the damn video and if it's your first time watching me first time to the channel and you like what you see then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the tiger squad now and while you're at it hit that notification bell too so that youtube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content and that's it i'm out of here until next time hope you guys have a fantastic fantastic day i'm tiger with tiger uppercut media signing out